today's R&B and throwbacks. I'm Glam Life Kim, and it is 1 after the 1 o'clock hour, and you are now tuned in to Minneapolis 360 with one of my favoriteest people in the Twin Cities, Mr. Anthony Taylor. How are you today, Anthony? I, I feel really good. It's hot. I love the heat. I, I, I got my shorts on, my T-shirt. Like, I'm really trying to embrace this hotness, Kim. What about you? What's going on? Hey, I got on my little one piece, the little short set. I'm embracing the, <laughs> the heat as well. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you something. I love heat. I'd rather heat over cold air. However, Minnesota is so bipolar because we went from cold straight to hot. Like, there's no in-between. We. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the oven got turned on and nobody told us that we was cooking. No, facts. <laughs> it, and and I, I I I love it. It is it's it's one of the things that I think that we as Midwesterners in general, right? We we complain it's too hot, then when it's the, the polar vortex that come and drop down thirty below zero, we complain that we wish it was hot. I am in the in the full embracing it mode. So I know that's right. uh got to do it. Minneapolis, I, I think you should do it too. We only got a few of these months in the year, Minneapolis, and I know it's hot, but but try to enjoy it. Yes. Uh, I want to welcome everybody to the show. Uh, this is Minneapolis 360. I am your host, Anthony Taylor, African-American Community Specialist for the city of Minneapolis. And Minneapolis, it has been a long time, and Kim, it's been a while since I've been on the radio, so I got to get my my, my my groove back a little Got bit. It. I know I was I know I was out next uh, a couple weeks ago, and I want to thank my colleague uh, Christine McDonald for filling in for me uh, while I was on vacation. And I, one of the things that that I look forward to, obviously, Minneapolis is being able to come on and talk with you all about many different things, many different topics. And today, uh, I just feel re-energized, Kim. I think your energy is coming across the. The phone, Glenn okay. Golden's energy was coming across the phone. What's going on today? Hey, the sun is out, and we woke That's up right. to see another day. And another day. It, it always leave it to you with those words of wisdom. I love it. So, <laughs> everybody, welcome. I want to uh, talk about what our show is today. Uh, it is on environmental justice. I uh, have one of the persons that I have met throughout my a uh, few years here in Minneapolis to come on and talk about environmental justice, Roxanne O'Brien, but I want to give her her roses just a little bit later, right, because I have so much respect for this woman. Uh, I'm going to give her the proper introductions, but as you know, I want to give kind of folks just a little bit of, of information that I think is important that we understand and, and kind of just put in a, in, a, in a front of our brains as we move throughout the course of our day. Uh, in the course of our week. And, and one of the biggest things that I really want to make sure that, that folks understand is two things. One is that, you know, we are a little shot. So more than 90% of Minnesota seniors have at least gotten one shot. So we've kind of slowed down our, our, our pace a little bit. Currently, 71% uh, of all Minneapolis residents age 15 over are fully vaccinated. So we've had conversations before Minneapolis about the choices that you can make. Again, I'm never one to, to push either side on getting vaccinated, not get vaccinated. Again, this is really about the information, but just wanted to kind of give folks kind of the, some numbers on where we're at here uh, locally and statewide with our, our vaccination rates. So we were, our goal was to get 70% uh, of Minnesota 16 and older uh, one shot by July 1st. We're getting close, but we're not there. So uh, I'm going to turn the page on COVID and, and talk. One of the, the biggest things that we that I want folks to understand, too, as well, is that uh, June 1st, the mayor lifted uh, the mask requirements in our city. So I think a lot of us understood that. I think when the governor followed the CDC's uh, recommendation on, on masking, I think our city was a little bit slow to, to get to that point. But that has happened in June. So I just want to tell folks, just respect people's spaces and wishes and understand the situations that you're in. COVID has not been gone. COVID didn't take a vacation. Minneapolis is still here. So <clears throat> just make sure that we kind of respect others and respect ourselves and our families to 
make sure we do what we can to keep uh, our loved ones protected. However, one of the biggest things that I want people to understand is the peacetime emergency is still in place June 4th, right? It's been extended uh, each time there's, we've come up to that, uh, that mark that the governor set. So June 4th is still in place. As long as this peacetime uh, emergency plan is in place, there's a lot of things that can happen, especially with the evictions. Now, I said this before, maybe a month ago, Minneapolis, that we have to understand that this is not going to be keep getting extended, right? So there's going to be an expiration date when this is over. So the reason I say that is that renthelpmn.org is a website that you can go to to make sure that you can get some back rent paid. You'll be able to get a few months in advance paid, some utilities paid. So again, and every time I preach to Minneapolis, give this information to somebody. Somebody knows somebody who needs some help, right? So renthelpmn.org is a place that you can go to get some assistance with rent and utility, utilities if need be. So want to kind of put those two things out there, but I'm, I, Minneapolis, am really excited about our guests. And I, you know, I like to move fast through some of these things because I get so excited about the guests that I've had. And I've been blessed to have a lot of different people on uh, this show. And, and one of the things that, that I've been pushing for is to have more community members' voices being uh, heard uh, on the city-sponsored show. And one of the things that I'm excited about, because this week and next week's show, we'll have community members on. And I think it's important because a lot of times we forget that there's a lot of people doing great work in our community that need uh, sometimes the city's help to create those voices. And I have one of my favorite people of all time on the show, uh, Roxanne O'Brien, along with one of her young people that she's been working with, uh, Tasia Cleveland. Uh, Roxanne is, is going to talk today from the community members for environmental justice about environmental justice. And before I, I bring her on, one of the things that I, I respect about her is that she wears so many hat in our, hats in our community. She's an activist. She's an organizer. She is really passionate about everything that she does. And I have immediately got a connection with her because of that passion. And I've worked with her on green zones and, and different opportunities, and I've been waiting for her to come on this show. So, Roxanne, welcome to 360. How you doing today, sister? Man, I feel the love. I appreciate you so much because, uh, you know, it's always, you know, I'm always nervous to, like, speak to my people because I want to make sure that I get it right. And, you know, this is important to me and other people that I work with. So I'm just honestly grateful that we were invited to be able to speak, and I'm so grateful I was able to bring someone with me who, you know, I've seen as a leader, an upcoming leader, and just trying to invest in her. So I brought Tasia Cleveland with me, who's super powerful and passionate about this work, and she's um, a young mom out here, and I just wanted to uh, have her come with me so we can talk to the people together. And and I, I'm Thank I'm glad you. to have you. And, and is that Tasia? How you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm I'm good. I'm good. So let let's dig into this, right? We got a 30 minute show, so we're gonna try to knock out a lot of stuff because it's important, right? And when you talk about environmental justice, Roxanne, just kind of tell listeners like who are you and and what really is community members for environmental justice about? For sure. Uh, so, uh, I'm a mom. I live over north. You, I mean, I, I celebrate in my community. I work in my community. I love my community. Um, I cry in my community with my community. So like who I am is, is everything that I am in organizing too, because I, I see the hurt, I see the pain, and I also see the brilliance and the power. And I, you know, I act on that, and I move on that, and I walk with my ancestors and the things that I was taught growing up about, you know, cooperative, you know, just being in community. So we're building a coalition called Community Members for Env Environmental Justice, uh, which is the, that is the strategy that people, black people, indigenous people, and um, poor communities have 
came up with as a strategy, environmental justice is the solution to environmental racism, um, and that, you know, we're working together to push back on that. And so that's how CMEJ came about. It's like, really, it's just all the people who come out and support this work of environmental justice, and we're just community members, you know what I mean? Not just, we're powerful, but we try to just, you know, that's what we do is we fight for uh, community uh, environmental justice. So that's who we are, and Tasia is one of our, you know, members and leaders on the core team. Um, but we met at Juxtaposition Arts because Juxtaposition Arts is our fiscal agent, and, like, they really support our work to be able to, you know, have our own voice and our own initiative. And so here we are just kind of coming up right now. Um, Tasia, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, my name is Tasia Cleveland. I'm a part of CMEJ Community Members for Environmental Justice. Um, I'm a mom. My son was just born on March 19th, actually. Um, I'm an environmental justice advocate. Thank you. Um, I'm an environmental justice advocate, social justice advocate, and marginalized youth advocate. And I've also been working at Juxtaposition Arts since I was 14. We are with Roxanne O'Brien and Tasia Cleveland, community members for environmental justice on the program today and, and Roxanne you, you do so much organizing in the in the community <laughs> and one of the things that that I, I I love about you is that you're passionate about everything that you do so so kind of just explain some of the work that you've been doing uh in North Minneapolis specifically because you are a north sider yes I was born in Los Angeles California but my mom moved here in 87 and so yes I I feel very strongly and connected about North Side. I consider myself from the North Side. I've, you know, raised my kids on the North Side. My mom lives on the North Side. My sister lives on the North Side. Um, you know, my kid's father, one of them, lives on the North Side. And so, yeah, I mean, I work here. I sleep here. I, I play here. I, so it's, it's pretty much I'm here. And I, um, yeah, like, it's. It's important to me that in my life I work on issues that impact my community and I'm not doing work that is building up other communities or other corporations, but that I'm building up the institutions and the cultural institutions that we need here in our communities to make sure that we're, like, organized, that our families are safe outside, that we are, are, are creating our own empire so it's very important to me that this work means that. This work means that we we fight oppressive systems, but we also we also fight our own internalized oppression sometimes. You know what I mean? Because both are needed. One hundred percent. So so tell us what are you working on now? What what you got your hands in? What's in, what's important to you right now, Roxanne? Well, when we talk about. <laughs> Well, I'm like, I wear so many hats, so I feel like, uh, you know, with Juxtaposition Arts, with the tactical team, uh, I love doing the work there because it's real creative, it's artistic, we get out there in the streets, we do our best to have really um, hard conversations with people in chaotic spaces sometimes, and so you might see us out there on a block, you might have seen us playing dominoes or sp um, spades or some bubbles on Broadway and everything. You might have seen some movies out here. We played Baby's Kids not too long ago, Black Panther, Coming to America, Crooklyn. We've been playing all the black movies out here trying to um, uplift vibrations. And, you know, so we got a project called Broadway Vibrations happening throughout the summer, every summer, and you'll probably see us like that and um Tasia can talk more about that too but you also will see um we got a lot of stuff going on with CMEJ in terms of like Northern Metals which has been like a pollution facility giving us a lot of issues for about 10 years we've been fighting that issue and we're still fighting that issue because they've had continuous fires um throughout their facilities and it's just it's 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 an urgency, you know, like it's something to pay attention to that people might not be, be paying attention to. So we're trying to bring that awareness around um, 
facilities in our communities that are harming us and also getting away with it. Like, we're not having a lot of governmental support or, like, um, we need the cities and we need these state agencies and these politicians to actually act. So we're pushing to get different governmental agencies to do what they're supposed to do. So, you know, if you're supposed to be creating policy, come on, we need, you know, a cumulative impact bill that, would start to put some accountability on what is being pushed in our neighborhoods, you know, and like stopping, pushing back on things that are increasing the pollutants in our communities. Um, Cause we've got just accumulative impact, which means like we've got a whole lot of pollution mixed together and it kind of creates this pollution soup. And we've got the highest rates of asthma. We've got, you know, cancer clusters between North and Northeast Minneapolis. We've got the highest rates of lead, um, so, you know, we've got a lot of issues going on that people aren't, maybe aren't aware of or just, like, you might be aware of your cousin having asthma or your grandma having asthma, but, like, you don't understand that a lot of the things that contribute to that is the cumulative impact, the high um, toxins and uh, things called particulate matter, which is really a fancy word for pollution, but it's, like, mm-hmm. particulate matter is is um is also impacting whether you know the the increase of covid that covid-19 death so like there's a correlation there's a connection between communities all over the world that have high rates of pollution and they are the ones that are having the highest rates of like covid-19 death so like there's a lot of connections in environmental justice there's Police brutality is a, you know, a situation in environmental justice. It's a toxic thing in our neighborhood. You know, um, community um, pollutants is, is an issue. Housing is an issue um, in environmental justice. But trying to help people to connect those dots, that's the hard part sometimes. Um, yeah, we also have it. other things going on. I'm going to have Tasia tell you about some of our initiatives. Tay, you want to talk about the emergency preparedness initiative that we're doing every Saturday? Or not every Saturday, but, you know, we have some dates that we do them on Saturdays. Yeah. um, So emergency preparedness community protection initiative. Basically, so, like, every Saturday um, on the north side, we'll go door knocking. Our goal is to get 50 blocks done, but um, we just door knock in, like, the most overburdened communities well, not communities, but, like, neighborhoods. Um, the blocks that, like, nobody wants to go to are, like, the blocks that people think are, like, not safe. But, like, every time we're out on the block, nothing... I feel like our vibrations, like, our positive vibrations are the reason why nothing happens while we're out there. But um, we'll door knock, and we're basically just trying to get our community and neighbors to, like, build a relationship with each other in case of a community emergency. It could be, like, a tornado. It could be, like police brutality it could be miss parker having a heart attack down the street or something you know like or like a power outage just so like our community um can build a relationship with each other and that we can depend on each other in case of an emergency instead of like um you know like calling the police because well like last weekend when we were door knocking i was talking to a mother um who lives i think it was like on 33rd but she was saying that there was shooting and that they called the police and that the police said, these are the police's words. They were like, um, we cannot come to North Minneapolis. We don't come to North Minneapolis. So I don't know. That's kind of like a red flag for me. So I'm happy that we're doing this because we need to start depending on each other and our own people. You know, absolutely. And and I, I think a lot of us in Roxanne, you talked about it before just a few minutes ago about how important these things are. And, and some of these coded languages that that here that, that people hear is really just about pollution and the nastiness that can happen in our in our air and the quality of life that we want to have in our city. So as you do all of this work, what are some of the challenges that you face, Roxanne, uh, with anything involving environmental justice. Talk about that a little bit. Well, there's definitely no absence or no lack of challenges in this work. Um, Like another, I'll talk about it in this way. We have another initiative um, called 
Well, it's really, it's not that it's called it. It's just that we're building a garden, a community space that we're hoping that community starts to take ownership of. And it's on 26 in Colfax. We're working with Marsha Mays, who lost her son, Terrell Mays Jr., uh, several years ago. Think about eight, eight years ago, eight, nine years ago. And, you know, it really breaks our heart out here just knowing that at any point in time, I'm sorry. That's all At any point in time, we can lose our loved ones, you know, to anything. We live in an overburdened community, and it's hard to see people like Marsha Mays and um, parents of these young people who are losing their kids. And, like, there's no closure ever for that. But in environmental justice work, we want to work on more healing this year and, like, more things that bring us joy and, like, something that uplifts us and moves us. Um, so we are trying to create the space where community can kind of look after this garden, this space, and if kids can, we're trying to figure out, like, what can we put there for something that interests young people so they can play on it or climb on it or just maybe have some, like, start some little programming there. It comes from the city's uh, garden lease program. That was how we were able to lease it for a year, and I'm hoping community starts to take care of it. Um, but CMEJ, CMEJ right now is just, like, kind of taking care of it and, like, building the groundwork for it until community steps up and takes care of it. And that just means, you know, keeping it clean. Like, maybe you can water the flowers if you just drive by, you, you know, Check it out. It's right across the street from um, a church. It's on 26th and Colfax. We just planted a few flowers. We need to, like, continue to water the flowers because it's been super hot. But, like, we're trying to build a space that honors Terrell Mays, a black that he lost his life on, but honor his life and honor other people's lives that we've lost, whether that's from police brutality or from our own community violence because it hurts both ways, you know, and our community does hurt. People think that we don't hurt. You know, we hurt either way, and it's hard. We got so many things that we're fighting. Like, we can't fight at all, but together we can get a whole lot more done. So trying to, um, you know, every Monday we come out at noon, or you could come whenever you want, you know what I mean? If you want to, like, do work with CMEJ, be a member, come help us out. Like, if you just know how to work a garden, we're not planting a bunch of vegetables or anything. We're probably going to do some herbs and, um, you know, like, just some things that, like, kind of uplift our vibrations or, like, our frequencies, you know what I mean? And, like, probably do some programming. Maybe we'll do a little fire pit or Marsha wants to do barbecuing sometime. So we're getting a shed. We haven't gotten our shed yet, but I think, you know, we got a little rain barrel water that, so we can water the plants in the meantime. Um, we're also trying to, we might have, like, movies in the space, like, do, like, a screen. Um, we're definitely going to have, like, a communal space where, like, community can, like, sit down and, like, talk together at a table or eat together if that's what they want to do. But just, we just want to create a space that's, you know, uplifting and, like, and, like, honors Terrell May. So we're probably going to put some art and um, maybe, like, do a painting of this, of, um, just to honor his spirit and his life. So that's one in that we're doing. It's super challenging, you know, because this work is like, it's, it touch is like in the heart, you know, like, and it's so, it's so real. We're trying to create spaces where like community can really just build relationships with each other and get together because we're stronger when we build relationships with each, with each other. And that's one of the reasons why we do that door knocking initiative because we want people to start knowing each other for what their skills are like everybody's got a skill out here everybody's you know powerful and important and once people figure out what they do best everybody can share that skill with each other you know and that's how like we build trust and um you know love and support for each other if somebody needs something and you got that skill you know we connect or we know we can call somebody especially in an emergency like, it's good to know who knows CPR. It's good to know who's got a lawnmower. It's good to know who's good at art, you know, who's in art in many ways. You know, we need rappers to start talking about things out here, you know, to get messages across. Like, like let us know whatever skill that you have. Let's work together, write it down, keep a network list of each other. We call on each other when we need each other. So that's what we're building right now. Um, and another challenge that has came up for us is sometimes when you speak up about what's happening when, you know, people 
we just have a long history of our communities being exploited in general by people with a lot of money. So like Northern Metals is a million, Northern Metals pollution facility, uh, recycling facility, it's actually owned by a corporation in Europe. So there's a corporation from Europe in our community uh, making millions of dollars a day, like, <laughs> but they're polluting the community, right? And so they're exploiting us and they're getting away with it. They've also, you know, had felonies. They've, they've, um, they've been, um, found to have actually lied on their emissions of what they're putting out in our communities, but they hadn't been criminalized. They haven't been taken to jail or, you know, like, it's, it's, it's very interesting that people with money have a lot of the power over here. Um, they can even break the law, but they'll get away with it, you know? And so then you've got other places like GAF, which you might not notice these places, but they sit and they take up access. They take up our access to the river. Like Northside doesn't have access to the river. When you go to other communities, the amenities are nicer. You know, you can sit down, you got a little park and, you know, the air smells good and like the, the river is, is, is cleaner and it's like once the river gets to the north side, it no longer meets livable standards. So here we are not having access to our river. Corporations have access to our river. A lot of rich people have access to our environment. And, you know, that's, an, that's environmental injustice. And so, and when you look at it, a lot of the rich people are rich white people. And so that's environmental racism. And it's like, what is the solution? Environmental justice. We have to start to recognize these things. We have to speak out about these things. Like, I can't be the only person out here know, known to speak out on these things. You know, it makes me a target. It sh I shouldn't have to be a leader. Like, everybody should be a leader. You know, everybody is a leader. And so I'm really trying to look for the people. That's why we're going to the blocks. Like, we're trying to look for who the leaders are, who wants to come help, who wants to speak up. Because... You know, organizing is not about one leader. We can't keep expecting waiting one for one person. That's too much pressure on one person. And even now, like, I've, I've just struggled with, like, trying to work um, with the city, you know, like, trying to have access to um, our public officials, our, these public servants that work for us, and try, asking them to do better, you know? And, like, I feel like I'm begging sometimes, like, you know, and, and so there's another issue coming up called, um, or, you know, another thing that we work on called Upper Harbor Terminal, which, you know, I've been on both sides where, like, some parts of it seemed like a good idea and other parts of it I was concerned about. And when you start to speak about your concerns, you know, and concerns with people who have a lot of money, it puts you in a position. And so I think, you know, What's coming up with Upper Harbor Terminal? It's just a part of the river um, that it has been undeveloped. It's actually not just. It's the last undeveloped part of the Mississippi River, our drinking water, actually. Many people don't know that. Our drinking water comes from the Mississippi. And it's this last piece of land that has kind of just, like, been abandoned. It's where, like, the industry used to do a lot of their work and, like, you know, it has to be cleaned up, but it's very close to, like, GAF and Northern Metals, and it's called, that part of the river is called the Upper Harbor Terminal. They used to have a barge there where, like, these industries use the river to bring things back and forth, you know, to, to bring things from one way to another. And, you know, historically, that's what this part of the north side was always used for, was, like, just for these businesses and for working it was a working area, but like now it's time to change that. Now it's time to rezone that, and yep. so we are calling upon people to do better. Tasia, you want to speak on that a little bit? And I, I just was going to say too, love. We got um, we got to start wrapping it up. So real quick, Tasia, and then just where can people find you real shortly? Because we got to wrap this up. <laughs> they can find okay. us. They can either call six one two four three four eight eight six eight, or they can find us online at cmejustice.org. dot org. Okay, give them okay. the number one more time. Six one two four three four eight eight six eight, or cme cme justice dot org. Awesome. Okay, what do you feel? Why do you do this work? Um. Honestly, I do this work, like, this work means a lot to me, and I do it because, like, 
a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people my age don't really care about like what's going on, especially with our environment. And it just motivates me to care even more and do even more and like just try to spread the word and collective learn with people my age and elders. But it just means a lot to me. And honestly, I would do this work for free, even if um, I wasn't getting paid because the work just needs to be done. And it's really important to me. And if we aren't going to do it, then I don't know who else is. And I honestly don't want to see what the world is like in 10 years if I stop doing this work. So that's why I just, that's why I do it because, I want the world to change, and it would, I would honestly be really sad without this work, and I get really mad when I hear about, like, all of the um, obstacles and, like, things our communities face, so that's, like, a big reason why I do what I do. Awesome. Well, Tay, we appreciate you, Roxanne. Thank you so much for coming on the show and just enlightening the community and letting them know, again, if they can support you, if they have the ability to um, how can they get in contact with you? I just want to make sure it's very important that they have that information to be able to assist. Right. Well, Juxtaposition Art sits on Emerson and Broadway, and that's where we do a lot of our work with Juxta when we do our go on the community. But it's not like you could just pop up and find us all the time there because of COVID. Um, we try to protect our students. But you could find um, some of us at 612 612- Four three four eight eight six eight. You can text that number, or you can find us online at cmejustice dot org. Awesome! It's been a great show. Again, we appreciate both of you guys for your time and for coming on the show. And stay cool out there today, but get out and enjoy this sun. Man, we're gonna try. Thank you all <laughs> so much for having us. Thank you. All right. All right, Minneapolis, it is 32 after the 1 o'clock hour. And right now, coming up next, we've got Loudmouth Zany himself right here on 89.9 KMOJ, the People Station.